Friday night live improv from New York City and around the country. And we have a fabulous cast tonight. We are going to be streaming on and off between now and 9.30 tonight. So you hang around your uh, hang around your computer. And if you like and follow Scotty Watson Improv, uh, you'll get notifications. Just click the little bell thing and you'll get notifications every time we go live. Hey, terrific cast. As I said, tonight we have Sandy. Sandy is there. Hello, Sandy. We got Mike. Mike looking cute as ever. EJ is joining us for the first time. Yay, EJ. We got Heidi. Hello, Heidi. Taylor. Taylor, 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 Taylor. Bridget. Bridget. Taj, I think this is also your first time in the show. Although, second time in the show. Or peace. We love you anyway, Taj. Welcome. <laughs> Don. 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 And last but not least, Stephanie. Hello. All right. We're your cast. And the first thing we're going to do for you is a game called Goon River. Now, first thing I would like to get is a big event in the life of a small town. What's a, what's a big thing to happen but in a small town? A wildfire. <laughs> oh, that fire. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I'm going to I'm going to go for that. It's not going to say a wildfire though. They're going to have a controlled burn because then you could be forder. <laughs> Yes. 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 The, day the town council decided in Goon River that there was going to be a controlled burn. All right. Now's the moment when, if you're going to change your names to your to a character name, now is a good time to do that. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take you to meet the inhabitants of Goon River. Now, some people were for the controlled burn just outside of town. You know, it... Um, controls weeds and whatnot. Some people were against it. Creates a lot of air pollution and scares the animals. But I'll tell you one thing about the people of Goon River. Nobody was on the fence. Everybody had an opinion. So let's get started and meet some of them. I'm going to start with Felicia. Felicia, it's really nice to meet you. Can you tell us about yourself? Well, I'm Felicia and um, I run the laundromat here in Goon River. And, um, you know, I'm really kind of concerned about the controlled burn because my laundromat's right on the edge of town. Okay. And the people I service are out here on the edge of town. And I'm worried that, that the winds will blow sparks into our buildings and, and we could be in real danger. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense for, for you. I'm going to check over with Gus, Minow is it Minow or Mine Hour? Uh, it's Gus Minower. Uh, pleased to meet you. I uh, I run the of course the uh, the fish and tackle supply store here in uh, Goon River, and I am absolutely against this insane idea of a controlled burn. What in the hell? Nature takes care of itself. You're going to go in there and cause all kinds of problems. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. That is very, very clear. Okay. We got you. We got you. Uh, how about you? Marigold. I find that, you know, there's also a flower called a marigold. That's kind of cute. Oh, aren't you clever? Yes. My parents did that on purpose and I've just been ruining the day ever since they did it. Uh, so I moved here from a very large city where when there was a fire and you didn't do these controlled burns, everybody's homes burned down. So naturally, after retiring, I left that nasty big city and moved to this beautiful little town. I'm all for this burn because this keeps our home safe to have it nice and clean. Oh, terrific. Okay. I, can't, I see that. I see that as a point. Hello, Jasmine. Is it Jasmine or Jasmine Latour? Jasmine Latour. Uh, Jasmine Latour. Oh, so uh, tell us, what do you do in the town of Good River? I have the dance studio. Oh, cool. What kind of dance do you mind me asking? Well, all kinds of jazz, of course, as my name connotes. And then the tap and all different kinds of expressive, you know, dance. Okay, that's great. Now, were you for or against the controlled burn outside of town? I am against it because the fire, our fire, our passion should never be controlled. Ah, ah, 
<laughs> oh, I see. Okay, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of a for for you. It's more allegorical. The burn. Exactly. How lovely. Now, um, I'm really interested to see what Bernie Forrester says about this. Bernie Forrester is a survivalist. I'm told. I'm 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 led to believe. You you read quite well. <laughs> Well, I live outside the town, and I must say I just came in just to uh, get some supplies to go back to my little cabin, and now I'm hearing about this thing about some controlled fire. Well, I'm against it, of course, because that's where I live, in the forest, oh. where I assume you're going to want to have that uh, controlled fire. I'm against it. Oh, of course, especially if it's going to, yeah, that was that would be terrible. Cami East, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Cami or Kami? Cami. Excellent. Yes, Cami. Uh, I am the pharmacist in town. Oh. And I'm actually wavering on this controlled burn because the forest isn't very far from the pharmacy. However, and I do know that they're, they're trying to be preventative. However, there are so many people in this town who have lung problems right. and adding smoke to the air. I just don't, I don't see how that's going to be beneficial. I just don't see. Well, I see your point. So there's that. Uh, Mrs. H Ravisham. I almost said Havisham because <laughs> I'm not half as old as that old bag. I'm Rose Ravisham and I'm the town widow. You might say I'm a professional widow. I just buried husband number four and let me tell you, I'm heartbroken. I'm just heartbroken. Mm -hmm. uh, about this controlled burn, mm -hmm. I must confess I don't understand it. It seems to me like a contradiction in terms. It, you 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 might be right. These this this is the kind of thing that can get out of control. So interesting thinking. Uh, how about you, Bambi? Tell us about yourself. I am the town organizer. I was the head cheerleader and the prom queen back in the day, not that far away, <laughs> and now I am the town organizer now. I want this control burn because I'm organizing a hay ride to it to take all the teens and the young adults over to that control burn where we're going to have marshmallows and s'mores and a little bit of, well, hooch and not much because they're underage, but, you know, I have to give it to them so they don't sneak it in. I know what these kids do. And then we are just going to have a controlled Burn, bonfire, extravaganza. A controlled burn bond. I think that I think I might join you on that. And last but certainly not least, Princess Thumbelina, tell us about yourself. I own the headless Barbie shop and we repair Barbie dolls. Well, we specialize in Barbie dolls, but we repair all sorts of dolls. Okay. We can put the little heads back on when they fall off. We can put the little legs back on when the brother rips them off. We can put the little toes back on. We specialize in all sorts of dolls. For or against the controlled burn? The controlled burn is going to be fabulous because the dolls that cannot be repaired, instead of using duct tape and all this other stuff that people do, we can just throw them in the fire when no one's looking. Oh yeah, I'm not sure how environmentally friendly that'll be, but but all right, you you got your reasons. Uh, let's go. Uh, I want to talk about the day before they did the the controlled burn, and I know that some of you were for it and some of you were against it. I know some of you met to further your plans, and I think the best person to start with is Bernie Foster, the survivalist. Bernie, what did you do the day before the controlled burn? Well, I was I had gone into town because I had run out of supplies and. Went out, if you will, to the fish and tackle, bait and tackle. Been, hung out with my buddy uh, Gus, who uh, gave me a variety of edibles, if you know what I'm trying to say. Be able to 
go back into this forest and, you know, and, and uh, I walked around and uh, I spoke to a, a well, you know, a, a Mrs. Ravisham because she's so ravishing. <laughs> you know, when you live alone, you have to laugh at your own jokes. Sure, sure. That's probably, it's probably a good policy for you, sir. Um, um, and let's talk to Gus for a second. Now, I understand that uh, you got together with Bernie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> got together is one way to say it. Bernie and I went back and, uh, yeah, we both had, uh, we had some edibles and got Bernie set up with some, uh, some tackle, you know, threw in a couple of lures for him. He's a, he's a heck of a fisherman, you know. But uh, anyway, you know, uh, Bernie and I, uh, he had one and uh, uh, I had uh, three. Okay, I had four. I was, uh, I was not feeling any pain. And so I was inspired to go see my friend Bambi. You know, Bambi and I dated <laughs> not so long ago to, uh, you know, put in a last minute pitch, get her to change her mind on this, this insane controlled burn thing. Okay, well, let's go talk to Bambi. And uh, don't you get comfortable, Mrs. Ravisham. I know you were in there somewhere too. Bambi, let's start with you. Uh, I understand that Gus came and saw you the day before. He did, because I was running all over town trying to get everything set up so it would work. And he did. He's like, Bambi, Bambi, we're not in high school anymore. I said, no, but these kids still are, and they deserve, they deserve a fire. And then I also ran into Gus when I was going over to Cammie's pharmacy because I was taking care of a little bit of the dimple juice for the kids at the at the bonfire, controlled, diluted. And I wanted to make sure Cammie didn't give them out any drugs. She has a little few little tidbits laying around that sometimes the kids, you know, go in and give her some money on the side. Let's go talk to her then. Cammie, can you tell me about the day before? I understand Bambi stuck her head in your to your shop to make sure you were up not up to any no good. Sorry. Okay. Bambi thinks she runs the town. So, you know, whatever. I I you know, it's like okay, all's well here. But then Bernie came in and he was like really wackadoodle. And uh I, he wanted something to make him think straight. And I said, well, just lay off those edibles. You too, Gus, because Gus was with him. Lay off the edibles. They want, thought I would give them more, but <laughs> I don't have edibles in my drugstore. Oh. So, yeah. And then Jasmine, the dance dancer, came in. She's having a bit of a problem with her lungs. And then she's she's in trouble there. She her She's... You know, she has quite a workout every day and uh, she just isn't as strong and she's having, she was panting. Well, let's talk to her then. Yasmin, let's talk about your lung condition. I understand you went to see the pharmacist about it. Yes, I did. But I must say, this cheerleader and this princess, they have besmirched my reputation in this town. You know, just because I love to go, I like to go in the forest and, and dance and, and be natural in the way God intended without these clothes oh. and we we we, we partake in the natural herb we, we 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 revel we we Bernie and Gus and I at times in the moonlight I understand okay okay let's 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 talk to Princess Thumbelina Princess Thumbelina I understand that sometimes you and Yasmin go into the woods and um, dance naked is what I heard uh ah. Um, I just that is not that is not what I said. They they criticized me for this. Oh, I'm sorry. I I, I misinterpreted. Uh, I've seen her out there many times. I didn't want to rat her out, but she does hang with Bernie and Gus quite often out in the woods, and she also has a very unhealthy collection of dolls, an entire room filled with dolls, where you just see those little eyes open, close, open, close, open, close, all around you as you look. And she brings them very often with one eye missing. Oh. And I just wonder where those eyes are. I think we should check Gus's tackle box. 
I will. You know what? Maybe I'll get to that. I will certainly get to that. Felicia, I've been leaving you there for a long time. I'd like to ask you what you what you were doing the day before the uh, the day before the control burn. I forgot what it was. <laughs> you. Well, um, I was um, running the laundromat as I usually do, and and um, you know Bernie had come in in the morning to drop off some laundry as he often does because you know he lives out out in the range where where this is all taking place honestly and he's one of the people i'm concerned about because people like him and and friends of his i, I name no names because my feeling is what i hear in the laundromat stays in the laundromat sure. but um you know i was working on his laundry that day and uh and um i found some things in his laundry that concerned me. I found some um, some smoke bombs and um, some cherry bombs and things that I felt like might be might be intended to cause some trouble. Okay, that which makes you know, I mean, he and I are on the same page about what this is all, what we're doing here, but um, I am not in favor of uh, anything that might scare people. I'm against all this for scaring people. I'm not sure if you tasted them, they might've been edible, uh, but you know, we'll, but I'll look into that for you. I'll look into that. Uh, Mary Gold, tell me about the day before the controlled burn. It was pure chaos, absolute chaos. And I mean, you had Bambi going here and there, telling everybody what they're going to do. And you had Gus and Bernie doing all manner of drugs. It wasn't just edibles. I stopped in to see Cammy to get a mild sedative before I went over to Felicia's and did a little bit of laundry. <sighs> I saw, and maybe I shouldn't say, but I'm going to say anyway, because it's the kind of person I am, retired and all. Miss Ravershin was running around between the dance studio, the fish and tackle, and the laundromat here, there, everywhere. I don't know what she was doing, but she was smiling an awful lot. You are not the only person that has mentioned Ms. Rav M Mrs. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Oh, uh, yes, excuse me, Mrs. My bad. It's hard with a widow that many times to keep track. Sure, it would be. It would be. Okay, Mrs. Ravisham, let's let's talk about your what you were doing the day before the controlled burn. It seems like you were everywhere. Well, it was very simple. I always like to meet up with that lovely little survivalist, Mr. Forrester, and usually he takes my laundry too because a lady like me doesn't want to go into the laundromat. It's common. Anyway, that little bitch gossip Marigold managed to tell everybody my business. So what if I dart around a few of the little businesses in town? We have a uh, understanding going on, me and the uh, proprietors of these establishments. Sure. Thank you, Marigold. Wow. Okay, okay. I think I know the tempers are high. Tempers are high. Um, I'd like to talk about the day of the controlled burn and the thing that happened. I know it's going to be difficult to talk about. Um, uh, Mary Gold, I see that you're quite distraught. So let's start with you. What happened? As you know, I was in favor. So I was one of the first people there when the hayride came in. Mm -hmm. They were all liquored up. They were, they were liquored up. Those kids thought it'd be funny to spit on the fire with the liquor. <gasps> I was so close, they spat on me and I ignited a flame and I burned to death. Oh, it was awful. That is awful. And you know what? It sounds like the direct responsibility of Bambi. Bambi, I understand that your kids were spitting fire. What the hell? Kids will be kids. Honest, I was not my intention. <clears throat> I like Mayor Gold. She's my friend. Or was my friend. We went out. We partied together. She was sometimes my right-hand person. Yeah. But the fire was not as controlled as 
the town elders thought it would be. And yes, did the kids get a little squared away? Yes, they were having spitting contests into the fire. But the big thing that happened was it was very dry. It was a dry night mm -hmm. and somehow a spark managed to get itself to the hay, to the hay truck, uh -oh. you know, and the horses got a little spooked and started running over that created a wind and, you know, oxygen and fire at sisters. Mm -hmm. And it does all those things. And I just wanted to get the kids out of there. And I was pulling the kids and pushing them away and the horses were going and the fires were not controlled anymore. And I tried to stop the horses and the wagon and I held on to the back and my legs started flying out. And the next thing I knew, I kind of went underneath and they ran up and I got stomped on by a horse. Oh, that's a terrible way to go. That, that was just awful. Felicia, I see you having a big reaction to this whole story. What happened to you? Well, I just, <clears throat> I, it's so upsetting to think that exactly what I predicted would happen with all this is what happened. That, that the people who I most feared would be the victims of this so burn were Oh, it just upsets me so much. And for myself, the these winds that came up, the control, the fire, the control burn that wasn't as controlled as everybody thought would be. The wind blew it, blew it our way. Oh, no. And uh, my laundromat burned up in the flames. It uh, up, went up in flames. And unfortunately, I did not get out in time. All those chemicals in the laundromat. Oh, I'm so sorry, Felicia. What a terror. That's terrible to lose your business. Oh, and yourself at the same time. Mrs. Ravisham, uh, I would like to ask you, what happened to you that night? Well, it was really an exciting night, really. I'd just taken my second benzodiazepam of the day, and I was feeling a little dopey. I saw the most magnificent colors, oranges and reds coming. That laundromat was on fire. Well, I just had to go and look. Well, I'm afraid in my stumbling, slightly drugged out, kind of addled way, I tripped and my high heel snapped in a drain grill and I went down and I died of a broken ankle. You died not only of a broken ankle, but with a broken shoe in 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 poor in poor fashion sense. Oh, I'm sense. no symmetry, no symmetry at all. Princess Thumbelina, what happened to you that day? Well, Miss Ravisham tripped and fell because she was wearing doll shoes. So. I knew she was out in the doll shoes and I had a giant doll from Yasmin's doll collection that she wanted me to fix. A really giant doll, like a really big doll. That's what I'm talking about with the eyes that go like this. Yes. <laughs> so I needed the shoes and I go outside of my doll shop and I see Mrs. Ravisham tripped, she was, she tripped and fell and flames caught on her. Oh dear. It was, it, you don't want to even know. I mean, the naked dancing doesn't hold a candle to the fire right. and the skeleton that was created in seconds. But what happened to you? And moved. Ow, it was, ooh. Sure. Well, I needed the shoes. So I went to grab the shoe oh. and it was almost melted on her skeleton. Mm. So I, um, I need the shoe. So I have to fix the doll. The doll has to be perfect. All the makeup has to be perfect. The hair, the eyes. Uh -huh. As I'm grabbing the shoe and I'm pulling 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 the shoe, the fire 
touches me. I couldn't get away quick enough. It was like it sucked you in. It sucked you in. And you just get inflamed. Inflamed. And I was a skeleton too. Oh wow. Okay. Yasmin, let's 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 talk about this. What happened to you on the day of the controlled burn? I you were very involved in it. What happened? Yes. I must say, my dear, dear friend Rose Ravisham warned me against these evil women in this town ever since I moved here. But they always had it in for me. I gave my precious doll to this princess woman to fix. And what did she do? She replaced the ballet shoes on the doll with cursed ballet shoes. Cursed, full-size, life-size ballet shoes. And I did not know they were the red shoes of the story Rich. and so i put them on my feet and the heat from the fire and those shoes on my feet they made me dance i could not help it i had this compulsion to dance and dance and perhaps a little bit of the drugs were still in my system from the revelry of the night before and so i danced i danced around the fire i danced in the woods I danced around the town. I danced and danced and danced until I danced myself to death, just to death, monsieur. Something that I think is kind of fitting for you, though. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, well, okay. I don't feel so bad on that one. That's that's a nice death. Uh, okay. No, not so nice. Oh, not so nice. Yeah, I guess there is a certain... A certain uh, uh, unpleasantness to it. Gus, talk to me. What happened on the day of the controlled burn? What happened to you? Oh, I got up. I got up just early in the morning. I had a cup of coffee, had three edibles. It was a big day. I was going to, I was going to just like go down there and see what was going to happen. And I tell you what, that three edibles, <laughs> well, they were, there was a good stuff. Cause I looked out my window and all of a sudden I see Jasmine just kind of with these red shoes, you know, me and fishing lures, those red shoes look like fishing lures to me. And that's what I was seeing, a big giant bass that was flopping all the way down a main street. That's what I thought in my head. That's what I saw her. And I ran and I chased her and I chased her and I grabbed her and I twirled her around. I've got you, I've got you. And before I knew it, I lost my balance. I'd run right into Mrs. Ravisham and, the, and, and Felicia in the laundromat. And I burned up just like that. Oh, no. You got, oh, wow. But at least you were high, so didn't feel too bad. Uh, Cammy, if you feel like a, a calm, smart center of this town, what happened to you? Um, I, I could see that this was going to be a disaster. I, I mean, I liked the idea of the control burn, but, and sure enough, I mean, the boys coming in for their drugs, along with that dance teacher, and that that was not a good sign. But then all the little children came running in, telling me I had to come out because their Bambi was burning or, or dragging and the horses were stamping on her and she needed help. So, so I went running over and tried to help Bambi and then and then oh my god and then the fire came closer and closer and it was I saw it burn the the laundromat and the, my, my pharmacy is right next to the laundromat so I went running back with with to get the hose and that's on the side of my building to to prevent it from burning and the hose caught on fire and burned me too. Wow, you don't you don't hear that kind of thing from your standard lawn and garden uh, items. They tend not to catch like that. Oh, it's awful. Now, Bernie, I saved you for last because you were outside the town and everything that happened. It seemed like the fire swept into the town. I thought maybe I don't know what happened to you. Well, you know, first of all, uh, I'm a simple man and I'm an honest man and not like the rest of these villagers. Now, you're an outsider and normally we don't share these things. But the truth is that every full moon, we all go up and eat ash on the hill and we all take off our clothes and we all dance, if you will, to the warlock and, and witch spirits. Now, 
this particular time, indeed, actually, I'm sitting there in the morning, I'm smoking it up, and I'm looking out, and suddenly I see that there's smoke coming from the town. The burn, yeah. I run out. Well, I thought they had canceled the burn. They said that they had canceled the burn. Oh. So I run out, and I'm thinking, well, the, the town must be on fire. So I ended up and I got my pitchfork, which is not very helpful, but it's the only thing that I had. And I go into the town. I'm seeing the hayride and I'm seeing there's a bunch of children there and they're running all directions and Bambi's running in another direction. and She's on fire and I try and put her out. So I hug her really tight and suddenly I'm caught on, on fire and I'm on fire and there's nothing I can do. And the last thing that I heard was little children saying, Get some more marshmallows. We're going to have s'mores today. Oh, that's cold. That is cold. That's I'm worried about the youth of America. If that's the case. Remember, folks at home, stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop, and roll if we've learned nothing else. I want to thank the people of Goon River for coming and sharing your story. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you for watching our show. Hey, there's going to be more improv coming very, very soon. So... You hang in there. We're going to be right back. <laughs>